Our second article will be presented by Dennis from Kedge Business School in France and Stefan from the University of Melbourne. This team used a large sample across 89 brand communities with over 100,000 posts with and without firm responses to understand the most effective strategies for managing online firestorms. Thank you for joining us, Dennis and Stefan. Thank you very much, Rob, and uh, welcome everybody also from our team. So uh, Stefan and I are very happy to work you through um, our slides, our presentation, uh, also in the name of our co-authors. So uh, first, I'm going to start to uh, introduce a little bit uh, of the topic and also of our research questions. Then uh, Stefan takes over, goes to the conceptual background and uh, the study setting a bit more detailed. And then I close with our findings and uh, last but of course not least with the implications that those findings have for our actual, the actual management of brand communities. So, to start, I mean, generally, and on one hand, um, social media is great for firms. Firms can use uh, social media not only to connect with customers, but also to connect customers to each other. And these connections with customers and also within customers can lead to uh, viral marketing, uh, positive word of mouth. And what you see on uh, the slide is the uh, well-known ice, cha ice bucket challenge, and I'm uh, pretty sure you all aware of this um, viral campaign for a good cause, which basically went around the world in uh, a couple of days. Uh, and uh, well, actually, to, to show the significance and also the, the relevance and reach of this uh, campaign, the uh, red guy that you see on the left hand side is uh, actually Barack Obama, who also took uh, part in this uh, challenge. Well, this is one example of uh, positive work of most of a very successful viral marketing campaign, but there's also many others. And uh, colleagues from us found in studies on basically the positive or the bright side of social media that such uh, word of mouth can lead to more spendings uh, from customers, increased spend patronage, and uh, more generally positive outcomes for firms. Well, but there's also the uh, darker side on the other hand. Um, of social media, and this is that not all customer posts are positive. And um, also those that are not positive, they are also shared. They might also go viral. And um, one, again, I guess quite famous example is uh, United Airlines uh, passenger removal incident. Well, it tickled the uh, fight club afterwards, where poor passenger was uh, removed forcefully uh, from the airline. Oh, and this uh, Video footage of this passenger, uh, a picture and also a short video, went viral even before the plane had taken off. So that's uh, what we term a firestorm. So negative word of mouth, a negative incident that also went viral, same mechanism as a positive one like the ice bucket challenge. And these examples, like the, the, the um, famous one, are the tip of the iceberg the examples that everyone is aware of, but also the other half of the iceberg below the surface can harm firms. I would like to um, explain such a hidden online firestorm to personal example. So I'm an alpinist. Um, I like to go to the Alps. I'm uh, living in France and in Switzerland. And one thing that you need when you go to the mountains is good protection. So a couple of years ago, I was uh, looking for a new three-layer hard shell jacket, a considerable investment, and I had some uh, different brands in my mind. And um, I researched a little bit online and went to the websites of those firms. I had a favorite, and then I also took a look at the uh, brand community of these brands. And uh, what I found that uh, there was a customer posting complaint about exactly the jacket I was interested in. It's not really waterproof. Well, might happen, but it's not a good sign. But what actually struck me is that uh, other customers basically support the complaining customer and agreed and made like the same complaints with the jacket. And there was no uh, reaction from the firm. So in the end, I lost the trust in the jacket and uh, I decided to go for another jacket. 
So it's not a big thing. It's nothing that goes public or that goes to the media, but it's still a little online firestorm that uh, harms firms or that harms the firm because I didn't choose the jacket. So this is the context uh, that we were interested in. And uh, basically, we aim to uh, answer three research questions uh, with our project. So the first one is, how can firms detect such potential online firestorms? The second one is, if they are detected, what can they do to prevent um, the dynamics of potential online firestorms? And uh, the last question, if they evolve, well, what can firms do to mitigate such online firestorms? And with these three research questions, I now hand over to Stefan. Thanks, Dennis, and um, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to this presentation. Um, so to investigate these three research questions, we um, drew a sample of 89 um, brand communities from the S&P 500 firms, which allowed customers to make online comments and post online um, comments onto their brand communities. And um, within these um, brand communities, we identified roughly 500,000 um, potential firestorms, um, i.e. negative posts, which contain negative content about the firm or its products and services. Um, and we tracked the variety, so the number of customers who responded favorably to that focal negative post um, across time in the first instance to identify um, and what are the features that make these negative posts go viral. And then in a, in a second step, we looked into the first firm responses, if there were any, and for uh, roughly two-thirds of those negative posts, which gives you an indication of just uh, how many uh, negative posts go unnoticed, um, firms did respond. And we looked into how successful that first firm response was in sort of reducing the variety of the focal negative message. And then finally, for about 15,000 of uh, the negative posts in our sample, one firm response seemed not to be enough. And so there were subsequent firm responses later on. And we then again looked into um, the nature of those subsequent responses and how these in turn reduced or um, in even increased the variety of the negative message. So what makes the negative message go viral? Um, technically, any negative message by a customer on a firm can become a firestorm. But as we saw, um, most don't. Um, and so we were wondering, you know, what makes the what what really drives firestorm potential? And as you might know, that most messages online are processed really fast by customers, and past all, actually, we just simply glance through. So we. Uh, absorb the information mostly in a heuristic type of manner. And most previous literature and research and marketing would suggest that um, the way we um, catch on to um, particular messages is uh, through a process which is called emotional contagion, um, which essentially means that you're catching the emotion that is displayed to you by a significant other. And there has been a tremendous amount of work being done on that um, topic by people and groups around Barsaid, Hatfield, and Berger and Marketing, who've identified um, four key factors that drive or make a, a piece of information or emotion displayed more contagious. The first aspect has to do with the arousal of the emotion displayed. For example, um, anger as a high arousal emotion is likely to be more um, impactful and contagious to people than uh, low arousal emotions such as sadness and disappointment. So we were mining um, the messages for this type of emotion to identify what type of emotion, negative emotion was displayed. Furthermore, um, even though online brand communities are almost anonymous and nobody knows who's who, um, there is one thing that gives people the idea of how closely um, or similar they are to um, the person posting, and that is how they are writing. So if you are in an online space and you do not know who you're communicating with, you'll use the writing style of that individual to identify how similar it is to your own. And um, emotional contagion theory would suggest that the closer or more similar the person writes, to your own writing, the more impactful their emotion will be on you. 
Finally, it's about who. So people who have strong and frequent contact with each other are more likely to influence each other. That's not rocket science. And so um, people who are strongly tied within the brand community are more likely um, to have their opinions heard. And so that would be the fourth factor that would make a message more contagious. Now that we know um, what makes a message more contagious theoretically, the next question was, okay, so um, what then can firms do or what do firms do in order to respond to negative messages? And we ask ourselves, okay, so what are the goals here? And the goals are actually twofold. The first one is obviously a firm is trying to recover from the service or product failure the customer is complaining about. And that ties strongly into the literature on service recovery research, for example, by Bittner and colleagues. On the other hand, you also have a unique situation in online communities where you try to regulate the emotional impact on others. So not only are you trying to recover, you're also trying to regulate the extent to which the focal negative message is contagious to others. Now we know and we've seen before that lots of firms do not respond at all um, to any negative message. But if they do respond, they essentially choose from one of five categorical responses. That simply uh, overall gave us about 97% of all responses were classified in one of those five. The first part we categorize as disengaging, and that is a firm is simply offering compensation uh, for a um, bad customer experience, apologizing, or suggesting a channel change. So for example, um, why don't you go ahead and contact our service center or uh, email us? So that is called disengaging because essentially you're taking the conversation offline. You're taking it off the community. There are two more engaging type of responses firms choose. The one is empathy, whereby you sort of signal to the customer who's frustrated that you're understanding uh, his situation, but at the same time you try to get him to focus on the positive side of things. Or explanation, where you rationally explain to the angry customer why um, they've had this particular negative experience. So across these five responses, we were then interested in, okay, so which one of these work and how are they best combined in order to best remedy or reduce the variety of negative messages? And uh, with that, I'd like to hand back to Dennis to walk you through the implications. Thank you very much, Stefan. So um, what did we find? So first of all, I'll present you the findings regarding how to detect potential online firestorms. So um, if you take like the four drivers that uh, Stefan explained to you, um, that we can all detect with um, dictionary-based automatic uh, text, um, text uh, analysis, we can explain 25% of our reality of negative posts, which we get is uh, a lot. So, um, they all have some influence, but what we were interested in uh, in particular is the relative influence. So what we found regarding the uh, arousal levels, as expected, that high arousal has a higher influence than lower arousal, meaning that uh, a message can have like, the same level of negativity in it, but if it's anger, it has a higher influence compared to if the negativity is there in terms of sadness. So this finding alone uh, would suggest that uh, simply uh, having a look at the positivity or negativity of uh, sentiment does not explain the important nuances. What we also find is that this concept of the linguistic style match, so um, how, um, how much a customer or a user um, talks or writes in line with the community, has also a medium influence on the variety and um, quite uh, surprising for us. It matters a lot who does uh, comment or who does complain in the community. So by far, the structural choices in the community in terms of the number of connections has the highest influence in the drivers. And these are like the four categories that the firms can use to detect potential online firestorms. But then there's the question, okay, if there's a high likelihood of a post becoming an online firestorm, what can firms do? So um, although many uh, 
companies uh, choose not to answer to a negative complaint, we find that um, across all the brand communities, not responding as the worst choice is the worst option, because then the the actual um, emergence of the online firestorm is uh, given to the community. So this is the worst option. It's always good to answer. And um, what we also find, not very surprising, that it pays off to answer fast. So the faster a firm answers, the more likely they can calm down or even prevent a potential online firestorm. So if they answer, like in this example, um, that's good. Essentially, this is the first step to basically prevent a potential online firestorm. Uh, but then we were also interested in uh, the effectiveness of the five categories explained by Stefan. Well, what we find here um, with regard to the disengaging strategy that uh, both topology and channel change uh, has a medium effect in reducing the variety. So uh, they actually work across the communities. Um, contrary to our expectations, we found that compensation has even opposing effect. So it increases the variety if it is used as a firm's answer. So, and we uh, speculate that this is because um, that this basically is an admit of a firm that they are guilty and may even motivate other users, other customers uh, to try to also find a compensation. And these are the findings regarding uh, the disengaging strategies. With regard to the engaging strategies, we found that, again, both work showing empathy and showing explanation, but that empathy, basically um, being more on the emotional side, has a larger effect than being more on the cognitive side with explanations. Well, however, we also are interested in the interplay between the drivers and the different uh, response options for firms. So, and when we uh, investigated the interplay, we found an interesting uh, change in the effectiveness of uh, explaining and being more empathic. And this means that um, regarding the emotional intensity, so if uh, a potential online firestorm is based on a lower emotional intensity post, it pays off uh, to be uh, really empathic towards the complaining customer. Whereas there's uh, a lot of intensity in terms of uh, anger, for example, in the post, it uh, pays more off to be more uh, exploratory, to explain maybe the reason for a failure and uh, basically to try to uh, cool down the emotions. And uh, here, uh, clearly, the explanation strategy is more effective than the empathy strategy. Um, overall, those uh, different uh, response strategies and the interplay with the different drivers uh, could explain or could reduce variety of up to 10%, which might um, appear low on the first side. But if you consider that like the large firestorms, uh, there are thousands, hundreds, thousands, sometimes millions of customers and users involved, this really can make a difference for a firm. So our last question uh, was related to already evolved online firestorms and how firms can uh, mitigate such uh, firestorms. Well, and the important thing to consider here is that um, oftentimes uh, more than one uh, response is uh, necessary and users uh, tend to see them as the sequence, as the whole, and not independent from each other. So they're viewed collectively. So how can then uh, firms or how should firms react over time with different responses? Well, what we found that first of all, it pays off uh, to vary the response strategy. So simply always responding in the same way might even drive virality rather than reduce virality over time. If you have a closer look uh, into these uh, response patterns, we found that um, it pays off to be first um, exploratory try to explain, for example, why something happened, why the failure happened, and then if this is not enough, if still um, other users complain, support the complaining uh, customer, as in the example, then firms should shift the strategy and basically go with uh, empathy rather than more explanation. 
What we also find uh, quite interestingly is that um, if in later stage, so after several uh, interventions uh, from firms, firms still use apologies or try to change the channel to, for example, email or like uh, phone uh, support, this also increases loyalty because this is seen as not uh, providing a solution within the community, but rather trying, trying to uh, calm uh, the firestorm down without um, basically addressing the problem. What we indeed what we also found is that in later stage is it pays off to offer the compensation as a kind of a last resort or as a last um, strategy to calm down uh, the online firestorm. So uh, to summarize, um, we have this large scale study. We had this uh, three research questions related to the detection of uh, potential online firestorms and then how to prevent them in the first instance, and if not possible, how to mitigate them with response strategies over time. So this was our uh, study. Uh, thank you very much for your attention, and uh, now we're looking forward to your questions. Thank you. We now have time for questions from our participants. If you want to ask a question, you can type your question in the Q&A tab on the left side of your screen. As a first question, did you find any changes in the prevalence of observed firestorms over the whole study period? Mm, yes, uh, it's a good question. Um, indeed, we uh, did find some changes. So uh, what we found is that um, the actual number of those firestorms, they increased, but the uh, attendance and also the firm reactions were quite stable over time. So we did see that uh, more and more um, users or customers use the social media channel in order to complain or to post something um, negative, but we didn't see a change in firm behavior so far. Okay, great. Um, how can companies customize the detection of potential firestorms? Do you have any insights on that question? Well, um, that's again a good question. And um, what firms can do is given that our uh, approach is based on uh, dictionaries and um, categories of uh, emotions or um, also based on the similarity uh, with the communication style, it would be quite easy for firms to basically add their own dictionaries and they can use it to basically customize uh, the detection and include other factors that we have not considered in our study on uh, several communities. Great, thank you. Um, another question from the audience. Does the effectiveness of these strategies vary by the type of online community? Can I can take that if you want, Chris? Yes, yeah, please. Uh, so, so we didn't actually investigate that, but that's a very, very good question and a very interesting um, future research topic. You could imagine that particular companies um, who are maybe more emotional in nature or more love brands, for example, would probably um, be expected to respond differently than, um, for example, a financial provider, uh, service provider of sorts. So um, that's a very good question, but uh, we didn't actually investigate that in specific. We controlled for it. Um, at the brand community level, but we didn't actually investigate it in detail. Because you could think that maybe some communities would be much more prone to emotion contagion. Yes, 100%. By the general nature. Yes. And also, uh, uh, the customer in a particular brand community uh, for, uh, um, let's say, a more emotional uh, brand would be likely to experience and this is me just hypothesizing, would be likely to expect more of an empathetic response rather than a rational explanation, whereas in a more rational brand context, um, potentially, um, the expectation would be more like a rational, um, direct um, explanation as to why things went wrong. Maybe to add on this, so what we... Okay. Yeah, go ahead. No, uh, to add on this, um, what we did find in our uh, study and our data is that in uh, communities uh, where there's a higher amount of emotions, 
some more emotional conversations, they are also more likely to have firestorms. So that's what we found. But we didn't then dig deeper into the uh, different strategies and interplay with the emotionality of the communities. Okay, thanks. Um, another question from the audience. Do you know why a firm would choose not to respond? Is no response ever a good decision? So maybe I start uh, to answer. So um, we uh, did um, basically uh, do some, or we did some interviews with uh, different uh, firms that uh, and different community managers, and what we found out that um, well, some firms are not uh, aware of it, or they uh, lack basically the manpower to 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 uh, respond to all of those um, posts. And some other thought of that, uh, they basically take it so serious. Because, I mean, as we have uh, uh, shown or told you before, not all uh, potential online firestorms uh, basically evolve. And uh, what you can uh, see at some firms, so if um, they have, have some complaints, but they don't have like a break, uh, an outbreak of uh, comments and reactions. They tend to become a little bit lazy, don't take it seriously, and then, of course, they're more likely to get one afterwards. Great. So do you maybe, think um, – oh, go ahead if you have another point. No, go ahead, Rob. That's right. Which companies do you think do a very good job of managing these types of poor firestorms, and um, are there some that are not so good? So um, – well, we um, not we're not allowed to basically name those companies, but uh, we uh, did uh, see some that do a good job, and this is uh, mostly because they have a higher response rate. So the response rate towards complaints uh, they differed a lot within the uh, um, between the communities, and um, then we also had some uh, companies that when they, for example, follow up. Firestorm, they really um, used those uh, different strategies and changed uh, from, for example, being more empathic to uh, being more exploratory. And they did a good job. And um, apart or in, in, uh, in addition to uh, what we presented here, we also found some that used uh, the mirror's answers. So they tried to, to be not that serious that you would expect in a different communication channel, but they basically adapted their answers to the social media context. And they also, I think, did a good job. Those that yes. uh, did not good, sorry, go ahead, Stefan. And, and maybe just to, to add on to that, in the interviews we had with um, company reps, um, it seemed like, you know, now you're inviting the little guy into the um, open space to voice the complaint and, and it seems like some of the companies were actually almost scared to engage so a lot of them opted for these disengaging strategies such as you know why don't you contact our call center or um, here's some money please be quiet sort of thing and and those tend to not work so well especially the the, the money aspect because it's an admission of guilt um, which essentially triggers even more negativity um, so, so that was just my, my comment on that also. So some companies didn't do so well in that regard and um, others did really well in engaging the audience and as Dennis pointed out, vary the response um, and, and you know, tailor it and be fast at responding also. Okay, great. Um, one last question. How can companies customize the detection of potential online firestorms? So um, we used a, a dictionary-based approach, which means we, we're mining for um, uh, pre-established dictionaries, which would give us an indication of the negativity of a post. Um, obviously, um, this, the benefit of a, a dictionary-based text mining approach is that it's broadly applicable across contexts. Um, but it's never one as accurate as you would get with um, using machine learning. So in a particular context, you could um, supplement or enrich the existing uh, approaches to detect sentiment using something like machine learning for your particular 
brand context to identify more expressions and more terms which would boost the accuracy of detection, um, which is, again, beyond the scope of the study because we try to do it across different contexts. But if you are, in a, again, you know, in the financial service industry, um, there might be terms which uh, might be unique to that particular context which you could um, identify using something like um, supervised machine learning or machine learning uh, and then populate that list of expressions to increase the accuracy of detection. Well, thank you both, um, Dennis and Stefan.